Hello everyone, this is Andy from Hana Road Studios and uh, today we're gonna start the deconstruction of the brand new song by uh, David Guetta and Oliver Tree called uh, Here We Go Again. The whole idea is not to do necessarily a copy of it or a replica of it, it's more or less to get inspired by the vibe of it and to help you in a way uh, achieve um, a direction like they were able to, to do so. I mean, no further talk, let's uh, let's jump straight into it. Here's my Pro Tools project. I kind of already set it up to, to 130 BPM because more or less that's the, that's the BPM of the song. And just to give you a quick, quick uh, sneak peek of the, of the song is, uh, it's kind of like this. It has a retro influence, it has a retro vibe in it. It sounds very much um, like a UK dance uh, chart uh, song. So the elements for this type of uh, dance music are quite um, quite specific, to put it this way. And they're like specific kind of hi-hats uh, that are meant to be used or specific kind of kicks, you know, with a very, very boomy, boomy mid-end. So um, yeah, we're gonna use uh, those ones as well. The hi hats, as I said, they're quite uh, quite specific uh, for this one. So I'm gonna start like with a, with a kick that I kind of um, have here that I think it would suit it really really well. So more or less, it sounds like this. Because like most of the kicks in all sort of sound packs, they uh, almost peak. I usually use the trim. Um, uh, function from Pro Tools that actually allows me to to kind of gain stage really well my project. You're gonna hear me say this saying this quite uh, quite often about the gain staging because uh, it's one of the most important things to be honest overall in the production and when when it comes to to my productions as well. It's really 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 important. Um, the loudness you choose to hit each plugin with. Right now I'm setting my kick to more or less minus, uh, minus 8 dB uh, to give me enough room to work on it and to process it and to kind of give enough room to, to hit the master chain as well. I'm adding a fat filter on the, on the second kick just to, to make sure that it doesn't fight um, with the other kick and also it doesn't fight with um, the bass. When we will add the bass, uh, we have to make sure that uh, there are no uh, elements that kind of will fight for the same frequency. As you can see, it's quite boomy here in the mid range, uh, which is really important for, for this genre. has quite a, quite a fat low end, so it's gonna sit really well um, in the mix. Let's choose um, maybe the right, um, the right clap. I will straight away route it to my, uh, my drum bus channel. We'll deconstruct um, throughout the other sessions as well, uh, more or less what I use um, as plugins and why I route them this way uh, and more or less yeah, what's happening. So, so for now I'm gonna just bypass the, the master chain that I'm 
constantly using for, for this kind of productions. Sounds, uh, sounds pretty good. Uh, now it's already kind of routed through the through the main drum bus. We'll do the same thing with the um, with the clap. Uh, so it's gonna be a three four bus three four. Um, gonna choose something from Splice. I think we might use this clap, but not as a main clap as a feel, because usually this kind of uh, dance songs have this kind of clap feels instead of like tombs or, or other elements. Uh, so just to kind of make it sound as close as possible to the truthness of the, of the genre, if I can put it this way, then yeah. Yeah, this should be fine. I guess we'll do, we'll do the thing. So again, as I mentioned before, find your own sound and to choose the sounds that you like because just by copying other producers you're gonna lack some personality so uh, to be honest my recommendation would be to actually like choose your own sounds to get inspired by the elements of uh, each genre it's all good to get inspired by other producers and artists it's amazing but you know it's uh, as much as you can just uh, use the sounds that you you feel like represent your your production especially these days when the music is so like permissive uh, regarding sounds being original or as original as uh, it's possible is the main key i feel like um, one of the advantages of pro tools is actually this um, zoom in feature which kind of uh, allows me to to make sure that everything is on grid and uh, there are no kind of uh, like horses running <laughs> around i'm gonna just make sure that uh, it fades out properly like not to have any pops and clicks it's really really important to take care of to this kind of details as well because then you might end up like uh, like having weird sounds uh, when you hit the uh, the master compression so yeah So the thing with this specific clap is that it has um, quite some good mono information, but for my um, like preference, um, I would still try to make it uh, more stereo because I really like the um, the clap when it's uh, when it's stereo. I'll do that by using the doubler from um, Waves, which is actually a pretty good uh, plugin for for this purpose. It's really 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 important when you. Uh, work with um, the stereo field of a mono element of a, or of a mono sound. Be careful uh, of the phasing issues. You're kind of artificially adding some stereo information to to the sound. That's why um, I kind of try to narrow down the width um, using this plugin. I try to kind of make sure that uh, there is no uh, like uh, EQ information added to it without uh, uh, me wanting that. And um, after I'm adding the S1 imager from uh, from Waves again, just to make sure that I narrow it down. Good ways to actually check it, you know, constantly to check it by using all kind of. Um, uh, plugins such as um, the T-Rex metering that I'm using here for now. Just to compare it. And it might lack uh, some attack or some presence, but to be honest, uh, from my point of view, this genre is mainly driven by the kick. So it's um, it's really important to to focus on the kick to make sure that the kick has the um, the punch. For this genre, usually this um, kind of repetitive um, crashes uh, work. You know, just uh, bring the energy up. I'm using the age delay. I always make sure that the analog is off because I don't need uh, this analog information unless I control it. And I really, really uh, try to be careful because otherwise it's just unwanted noise um, that you have. Even if you add a noise to add it on purpose and to control it in a way that it helps the song and um, it doesn't uh, just uh, make everything too muddy. Digital world kind of made everything uh, very, very clean sound-wise. Uh, sound 
And I also, right now, as you see, I added the um, delay on the insert with a, you know, dry, wet uh, knob, but more or less 10, 11, 12. It has a ping pong effect. It helps kind of cover the stereo, stereo width. This could be a good um, good fit for our um, kind of drum transition. The hi hats, as I said before, it's are very very important for this genre. Again, I'm using splice. It's for the convenient purpose also, but um, the sounds are really good. There are amazing sound packs that you can find out there that really suit this genre. Um, so, yeah, let's um, let's see what we can find here. Um, I would straight away like narrow it down, just you know. Actually, I, I would use the one from the spinning. They have some cool packs as well. Um, spinning, my library, because I have quite of a selected library here. Yeah. I'm sure this one, like, <laughs> you know, serves the purpose. As you can see, the, um, the tempo is a bit different. It's 126. So I'm just gonna use the, um, the Pro Tools conversion tool to actually bring it to 130, uh, the BPM of this song. For the hi-hats, I'm actually going to use the um, PS22. It's just another good tool to, to spread the hi-hats in a very, very natural way. As you can see right now, it has some phasing issues. Okay, awesome. We're getting there. I might also layer the um, the hi hats um, with just another uh, loop. Might use these sounds as well. I already have them selected because uh, by producing lots of lots of songs, uh, I kind of uh, was able to create my own libraries of sounds that I. I like, so uh, yeah. I'm gonna route this kind of FX soundish um, impact to, the, to my FX uh, channel. It's important to actually stay as organized as possible. This is my way of routing things. It's not necessarily, or it should not necessarily be your way. Uh, I'm just using this way of routing things. I've learned it from the one of the, the biggest engineers from, uh, from Romania back in like, I don't know, 12 years ago when I was literally like uh, trying to soak in uh, all the information uh, that I had a chance. So uh, yeah, the buses can be routed any ways um, you like and prefer. And I always try, and I always try to make sure that I have everything like color coded. It's, trust me, I mean, sometimes I take it to that level where I really think that the color influences the way the, produ the production sounds. I'm sure it doesn't, but my brain has been trained like that. So, you know, I'm just going with the flow. Uh, so, yeah. Let's also see another uh, another loop that we have here. Uh, 
That's one of the loops that I, um, I knew about and, uh, and I've been using it. Awesome, it's, uh, it's already getting there. Yeah, so for now I will also kind of add a trim, um, trim to this song just because I'm not running the sounds through through my master chain just for you guys to to get exactly um, the the idea level wise uh, where we are at and uh, where we will be uh, very soon. The piano kind of drives the groove also and um, the harmonic part of, uh, of things. So um, yeah, we're gonna just make sure that, uh, that we choose the, the right piano sound. To be honest, this piano sound is really, really Nexus <laughs> sounding, uh, so uh, yeah. Yeah, this could be actually be a good um, a good upright piano. Not all kind of pianos work for this genre. Um, for this uh, specific one, uh, an upright piano would be ideal. So we're gonna use one um, here. Okay, I guess um, this idea could work. We'll just straight away quantize it because uh, I'm not uh, that good of a piano player. So, yeah, you know, I'll uh, I get my um, I get my way around kind of uh, by using uh, the quantize function as much as I can. Two thousand years later. Yeah, it's um, I feel like it's quite uh, quite groovy. Um, so yeah. I would I would still layer it with another piano just because um, it's important to, to also have that body, um, especially because it's the core of uh, of the song alongside the kick. I would actually use for this one the Avenger. I think I might use the Bright Pop piano. As you can see, I'm constantly trying to uh, make sure that the gain staging is uh, is good, that the pianos are not clipping, that they will hit after the master um, compression really good, and also the bus compression that I'm gonna use. So, uh, so yeah. As you can see, the the piano already has a delay on it, the reverb on it. I'm not gonna add um, anything else uh, on top. Maybe just an EQ to make sure that, like, they really sit well in the mix. And these kind of pianos don't require uh, too much of a uh, low frequency information. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're we're getting there. I'll quickly add the bass as well. Um, so I'm gonna use um, for this one. I'm gonna use the serum. It actually has some uh, some nice basses as well. Depends on the song. I might use the Sublab as well. Um, they have an amazing plugin now called Sublab XL um, that also kind of has a really really good sounding bass uh, basses. So yeah, uh, but for for this one, I think I'm gonna use the the serum. I already kind of have some. Um, some sounds um, that I know about, uh, and I think I might use the SDL bass. Let me see if the SDL bass too. Yeah, I think uh, this could be the right one because it has a really, really, really 
that low end. I think I could actually like play around more with the chords as well. Uh, let me just do it. I mean, just to make it, uh, you know, richer harmonic wise, like the details matter. That's uh, that's a fact. So. I would just add um, a dock on top of the the, the serum base. Um, it makes it uh, makes it more bouncy, more groovy. Um, really, kind of have to balance out um, when uh, the entire thing is too kind of straight, you know, just to kind of make it more bouncy, more groovy. Um, so yeah, I I think we're gonna achieve that uh, by using dock as well um, here on the on the bass in a very very subtle way and also I would reverse it I would not use it as a side chain to be honest uh, I would reverse it and use it uh, use it just you know as a volume uh, kind of uh I think I just I might just make the the release of the notes a bit a bit a bit um, longer. Kind of again, not to have them too like too too square. I would add just a slight, um, slightly bit of reverb on it. As you can see, I already have a, a compression on the bus. Um, but it's just a compression, um, just to kind of um, even uh, things out. Usually these kind of pianos are quite compressed, so yeah, I'm using one for, uh, for the bus. Yeah, let's also make sure that we have the verse. Uh, so I'm gonna just use another bass. As you can see also in the reference track, um, it's quite um, the bass is quite uh, quite repetitive, and the melody overall is repetitive. Uh, also, the top line plays a really really important role. Can just stick to stick to this concept. 
So I'm gonna also layer the, um, the bass with the synth. Um, the bass, I think it's, uh, it's getting uh, quite close to um, what we try to achieve. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just make sure that I narrow it down to the low frequencies, almost getting it close to a Reese sound, but also by using a kind of a Reese bass here would, um, would make it too close to a slap bass uh, kind of a song. So yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna use a really interesting bass that has uh, enough low uh, frequencies, but kind of not to have that um, top sound of, um, of a Reese. Okay, I have the um, the lead beyond here, but I would I would really cut the high frequencies of it because it, it's just not sounding uh, sounding right for now. I'm routing it right now through through the um, synth bus, uh, which is uh, on the seventeen eighteen, having only like a small EQ on it, uh, just for some adjustments. I have uh, sent to to my um, reverb bus, and also there is another thing that I'm constantly using. So when I'm trying to achieve a stereo width for uh, my synths or for my instruments, and even for my vocals, I have a send bus, which is um, made out of the Studio D chorus, alongside the limiter, and an EQ just to cut the low frequencies, a tiny bit of high frequencies. Uh, also, I'm hitting the compression after, and then I have the C4 just for kind of a multiband um, effect. I'm just referencing constantly just to see if more or less uh, the vibe is there or not, or I'm not losing the vibe, uh, you know, in this creative process. So yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's a synth uh, and the uh, bass, more or less uh, on the intro, and all the focus is around the lead vocals. I mean, a lead vocal that uh, is quite special. Uh, the sound of it is, uh, it sounds uh, sampled, although I personally think that uh, it was recorded, let's say, minus uh, uh, three semitones down and then kind of pitched up just to... Um, to get this kind of an effect. I might add other, other elements as well. As I mentioned in the beginning, the whole idea of these tutorials is not to copy something that uh, was made by somebody else, just to kind of get inspired by the vibe of it, just to uh, choose the right elements and to use them in a, in a productive and creative way that works for me, but uh, also um, for you. As you can see, there's also this um, this synth uh, that almost sounds like a, a vocal uh, vocal chop. I might still use the Nexus. To be honest, it's been a while since I used the Nexus <laughs> that often, but I feel like for this uh, song, uh, actually, I find uh, the sounds there. And also, it serves kind of the, the fast purpose of, uh, of this tutorial. There's always, you know, um, time to get back to it, to listen to it with fresh ears, to kind of change um, elements um, on the go. And also, it's, uh, it's very, very important. It's a very important process to kind of get away from that especially after one day and to, to get back to it the next day and to see kind of what um, things can be fixed and improved also. Uh, what I would insist on maybe more is to, to spend as much time as possible on the sound design. Uh, it's a really, really important thing, especially in the EDM music or in the modern music these days, to choose to make sure that you choose the right uh, piano sound because otherwise you might constantly have issues uh, of not achieving uh, kind of the final result that you are aiming for. There's always 
plenty room to to spend on on the sound design but for now just for the you know for the sake of like uh, keeping the flow on uh, we're just gonna go with uh, with the nexus <laughs> I guess uh, I guess this could work. I feel like it is it's a bit uh, too choppy, so I'll just try to make sure that the release is uh, is there and uh, the length of the sounds are are good. I'll either way add um, on top a duck just to, to make sure that um, it kind of gives that that groove again. Uh, I'm using duck. Uh, some people might use other other plugins. It's a matter of taste as well, and it's also a matter of like workflow. Again, making sure you know that it's not peaking. It's not too close to zero dB. feels a bit um, a bit unnatural uh, so I'm just gonna play a little bit with the velocity just to kind of I just added the low octave as well you know just to uh, to kind of give more body to, to this scene because otherwise it might sound a bit uh, a bit childish and also on top of that I would um, add a black box just to kind of um, saturate it more because it's too clean and too digital now. Also requires um, another synth underneath just to kind of again to to help make it more organic so yeah let's just try that Right now, I would double the um, the main synth. I would just uh, treat separately the um, the low octave because I feel like I cannot have the the control that I need uh, regarding the volume and the compression of it. So yeah, it's better to actually have the the low octave on a different um, insert. Quickly added the reverb. I'm using the Seventh Heaven from um, Liquid Sonics. It's my literally my favorite uh, reverb uh, plugin, to be honest. It actually is the best Bricasti M7 emulation that I've ever heard. Yeah, in this case, I'm just gonna use it on the insert, to be honest. Uh, I feel like it serves the purpose, so yeah. It has a little bit too much of a distortion now. I'm always trying to 
to make sure um, uh, that I'm using correctly the, the ones on send and the ones on insert. In this case, I feel like uh, the insert one should work because I also want to, to compress it uh, a bit harder. And I also want the reverb to be compressed. Otherwise, I would use it on the send. increase the decay maybe even more I'm gonna quickly add um, a compression on the synth as well um, I'm gonna use for this one the R comp just to kind of make the key stand out more. I would actually just make this one stereo as well and I might use the, the Brigade Chorus for this one from the UAD. Again, I'm adding an S1 after just to make sure that I'm adjusting correctly the like the stereo place of the sound. You know, right now I, I feel like there's need for lots of um, elements such as like bass drops, uh, like transitions. Yeah, let's just uh, quickly drop um, some of them in here. I think this could work. Previous one was a bit too cinematic to be honest for, um, for this genre. So yeah, we just added the bass drop here, just made sure that the, the EQ is there as well, like uh, cutting all the high frequencies because uh, the piano comes in straight away and I don't feel like there's need for any other elements to, to kind of uh, fight on that, uh, that mid frequency side. That can work, I mean, just for the sake of it, let's quickly also do kind of... Uh, reverse effect on the bass just so when the, the bass comes in in the second section uh, like it's not too not too drastic okay awesome i would Honestly, just add few more detail elements that I think would um, would really um, add um, some nice details to the um, to the song. I would add, I think maybe a saw-ish uh, kind of a synth on the um, on the chorus, just to kind of lift up the energy even more. I added. Um, a dock on it just to kind of have the the side chain and also i'm constantly you see adjusting here at the end just to kind of make sure that uh, when it transitions from a chord to another it doesn't have those kind of pops and clicks uh, you know i feel like there's a problem when the kind of this synth comes in um, it's a bit you know strange so i kind of feel the need to to prepare it to be honest what i would do is just kind of convert it into an audio because for me it's easier to work with audio files 
I feel like uh, Pro Tools is really good when it comes to this um, this aspect. So right now I'm gonna just uh, convert everything to the um, to audio, more or less the the, um, the synth part, and uh, to kind of make it come in uh, like smoother. Adding quickly um, the the synth just on one note to kind of you know uh, uh, keep the tension and uh, you know just to, to kind of make it come in really smooth. First of all, a fade in, and then I would also add on top just um, uh, a filter, just to make sure that it kind of comes from a low pass. Awesome, let's um, quickly add uh, some nice details and touches that I'm, you know, I'm a fan of, to be honest. I'm using Arcade quite often. I think it's a really, really amazing plugin. I'm always kind of um, using the hooked section for, for all kind of like um, small vocal melodies and uh, yeah. So let's, uh, let's play around with a few of them. Also, we have to make sure that we're in the right key. Okay, so more or less I'm gonna, let's say, choose this, uh, these two sounds, um, which is okay for me. It doesn't need to be recorded on um, on a grid because I'm um, either way I'm gonna convert them into audio and I'm gonna play around with the uh, with audio. I love doing this stuff to be honest because um, I come from a hip hop background. Uh, so back in the days, like we're talking something about like. 16 years ago, I started working as a hip hop producer. So more or less back in the days, it was easy to chop the samples and to cut around the uh, stuff. So yeah, I'm a fan of like cutting around samples. That's why I'm gonna convert them into audio and I'm gonna just quickly uh, quickly do some, uh, some cuts. Mm -hmm. Just gonna add a really really big reverb. I'm gonna also add an alter boy before, just to you know to, to play around with the format a bit. A fab filter, just to kind of uh, cut the high frequencies, and you'll see that it's gonna blend in really really nicely with the song, and it's gonna like add some really really nice details. The R comp is really really good for this purpose. Again, like I'm going really hard with these ones. I'm adding a, a delay as well, uh, you know, just to kind of uh, give a bouncy feeling. Yeah, let me just actually add um Add the reverb again, but I I'll print it this time, and now I'm gonna quickly reverse it. And I think I'm gonna also add just for the sake of it. Uh, maybe I'll remove the delay now. Add the auto pan. I'm gonna just quickly pan it to left and right again just you know for the creative purpose okay, 
I'm just adding also, you know, the sample effects that I'm using just to kind of to have it on the course as well, just kind of hit the course harder when it comes in. Also, let's um, let's make sure that we we turn on the master chain. Um, so more or less, this is a master chain that I've built throughout the years. You know, um, it's some plugins that I kind of discovered and I stick to it. Some of them I got rid of them. So yeah, uh, let's uh, let's just quickly quickly add this on top. I'm using the DPR uh, 402 from um, from the Waves. It kind of uh, adds some uh, wideness to the to the entire master. As you can see, it already kind of adds um, adds some width and some energy to it. Also, have the Sonox inflator on it, just for you know, just a tiny bit of a push, another kind of layer of um, saturation. I'm also using the master desk. I'm using the um, XL2 from the Brainwox from Plugin Alliance. It's good as a multi-band kind of master compression. I'm not hitting it too hard. I mean, you will see that it's kind of all about the details, uh, but the gain staging again is very, very important. I feel like the delay on this uh, piano is quite messy, especially now when it is the, the master compression, which is, I mean, fine, we can easily adjust it, that's not a problem. And to be honest, there's uh, one last thing that I would uh, I would add for now um, to this whole project. Pro Tools has an amazing feature called uh, Heat, uh, and I'm actually using on all the projects. I mean, without without any exceptions. Uh, so more or less, uh, I'm activating the Heat. I'm usually use, using it um, just to give an extra layer of saturation. It actually emulates really, really well the analog feel of everything. And I feel like all the sounds, especially for the dance music, it helps kind of blend in all the sounds together. So yeah. I mean, using with this one, I think it's gonna just, you know, uh, make the whole uh, mix and the master kind of uh, be more tight. So yeah, let's uh, let's just listen from the the beginning one more time. Yeah, so here it is. Hope you like this uh, first tutorial. For any suggestions, any comments, just feel free to to hit us up. You can uh, subscribe to our channel. Many more tutorials are um, on the way. I'm gonna keep you posted, guys, as well. Make sure you follow um, Hannah Road Studios on the Instagram channel, on YouTube, on TikTok. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, yeah, see you next time.